You know how to find out if somebody does CrossFit? Don't worry, don't tell me. What I want to see is vegan CrossFit, right? What do they talk about? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kevin Johnson. Right? Now I feel trapped behind this red line. This is, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to go. I mean, I just don't go. Don't go all the way up here like this. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was better when he was trapped. I, thanks. I suck at it. Well, more amusing. So good morning, afternoon, something. Welcome to. Delaware? Delaware. 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 Wow. I was in, uh, here. Don't worry, people live here have the same reaction. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I, it's, I, I like Delaware. Every time I've come to Delaware, it's been very nice. Uh, one of the best things about Delaware, I get to see Johnson Right? And this is a good reason to come to Delaware. So, uh, I'm Kevin Johnson. Uh, I'm not that excited about being Kevin Johnson. I've been Kevin for 45 years. Uh, Kevin Johnson for 18 less than that. Uh, we're going to talk about bacon. I personally think bacon is awesome. And I, I know not everybody agrees. I actually have a consultant that works for me, and uh, she doesn't like bacon. Uh, her excuse is that gives more bacon for everybody else. Uh, I've told her she's wrong. Uh, I actually have another friend who is vegan, but eats bacon. <laughs> and uh, I tried to explain to them that that means they're not vegan, and they're like, but it's bacon, and I can't argue with that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, it's just the way it is. The funny part about that is I had the conversation with them, like, do you eat pork chops? They're like, no, I'm vegan. And I'm like, so you kill a pig and only eat the delicious part. <laughs> that seems bad. That seems worse than, I don't know, I don't know. So we're going to talk about all the bacon. Uh, a little bit about myself first, because uh, we're supposed to do like bios and all that kind of crud. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, this talk, totally PG-13, I may curse. I'll try not to, and I'm looking around and it seems okay. I will try not to curse, but every once in a while it may pop out. I have a migraine right now, and that's what tends to happen. So, uh, just as a heads up. But, I am Kevin, I'm the founder and CEO of Secure Ideas. We are a consulting firm out of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we also have an office in what I refer to as Charlotte, South Carolina. For the people who are not geographically idiots, uh, you will know that Charlotte is in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, um, Rock Hill, which is a suburb of Charlotte, is in South Carolina and is where our office is. You would think I would know that since it's our office. We, we've been around for eight years. We're a bunch of nerds. Uh, I, basically, that's the story of my life. I'm a nerd. I am so nerdy. But the guy that used to steal my lunch money still does. But he makes a damn good Subway sandwich. <laughs> so, I've been involved in IT since 1991. I uh, professionally graduated high school. I uh, got a job as a developer and a bulletin board system sysop. Sy sysop, sysop. I can't, it's been so long, I don't remember which way to pronounce it. Um, running bulletin board systems for people. Yes, that is how old I am. Okay, uh, did that, moved on, got involved in security about 98 when the company I was a system administrator for got hacked. And I got pissed and said, that is never happening again. Got hacked again like three, six months later. Uh, so I was wrong, but I started to get involved in security dealing with that. And I became a consultant just over a decade ago. I have done everything from, I'm an IANS faculty member, not the pet food company. Um, I, so I'm an IANS faculty member. I wrote the web pen testing uh, mobile security courses for SANS Institute, uh, one of which has been open sourced. We open sourced the entire six day web pen testing course uh, in January, uh, which I'm excited about, right? The Professional Evil Web App Pen Testing 101. Uh, that's out there, we're still releasing it. Uh, I am an open source fanatic. So Samurai WTF, uh, 10 year anniversary is this year. As a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow, when I have my suitcase with me, uh, I have some challenge points from the Samurai 10th anniversary. So if anybody sees one, wants one, come talk to me and I'll hand them out. What's the password? Uh, the password. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you out. <laughs> so what he's making fun of is Samurai, for the people who don't know, Samurai WTF, which is the web testing framework. That's honest, that's what it stands for, not that other WTF thing. Um, when I first released it, I released it because I, I missed DEF CON and I was bored, so I wrote an operating system because that's what you do. And um, when I released it, I set it up, built it, zipped up the VM, and uploaded it to uh, SourceForge at the time. 
And uh, I, I think it was like a day later, I got an email. It's like, hey, Kevin, what's the password? And I'm like, it's a samurai. How did you not know that? Uh, you're a hacker. So uh, I realized I'd never released the password. So I created a text file and put it on the desktop and did a new release. Uh, of course, you had to be able to log in to get to the desktop <laughs> to get that text file. Uh, I felt it was a challenge. But uh, uh, that was my excuse, at least. Uh, but so I've done a whole bunch of open source work. I, I, um, I speak. I like to say that I'm an international speaker because I've been to Australia once and Canada a few times. It's kind of like the Jacksonville International Airport. Uh, we're an international airport because we have a flight to the Bahamas once a week. Um, I said that joke in Jacksonville, and somebody's like, we are to an international airport. I'm like, fine, where's customs? And Atlanta is not the right answer. But, um, <laughs> so, but the thing to keep in mind is that my main role is penetration testing. I attack organizations. I, I, I get a kick out of it, right? I get to tell you you suck and go home. That's my job, right? Uh, and, and it's a great job, but it affects my perspective on things. Like, we'll be talking to a customer, and the customer will say to me, hey, Kevin, how's the test going? And I'll be like, oh, it's great. And you're like, oh, so we're secure. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. <laughs> it's going great for me. I'm having a blast. The report's going to suck to write them. Um, you know, uh, things like the Equifax breach, right? Everybody else is like, oh my gosh, Equifax, they got our data. And I was like, they had our data. Uh, how'd they get in? Man, that's awesome. Right? So it's slightly weird, right? Uh, and that affects my entire perspective, right? That everything about me uh, is wrapped up in this idea of how cool it is to break stuff, right? And, and break stuff for good. Um, so I get to do a lot of that. Uh, there is, uh, and I want to be clear, this is um, uh, the two sales pitches for today. Okay, I, I try not to do sales pitches in my talks, but here's the two sales pitches for this talk. One, uh, our training, the recorded training, is free for vets, active duty military, and first responders. So if you're a vet, active duty military, first responder, our recorded training is free. Our live training is significantly discounted. Um, what we do is we basically just pass on the per seat cost we're incurring to the vets or the active duty military or first responders. So that's first sales pitch. I'm not a great salesperson. I sales pitch free things. Uh, second sales pitch, if you work with a nonprofit charity, please note the two parts to that word, nonprofit and charity. Uh, we had a nonprofit that has like a billion dollar a year budget ask us for this. And we said no. Um, <laughs> so if you work with a nonprofit charity, our services are free. Um, and they're free for as long as we offer the service. Right? There is a rule. Um, I'm going to try to say it politely. You cannot be a jerk charity. Uh, I'll give you an example since what, re re like what is a jerk charity? Uh, Westboro Baptist Church. Those. Jack holes that protest funerals, they are a nonprofit charity according to the federal government. I'm not giving them free service. Make sense? So as long as you're not a jerk charity, our services are free. Again, those are the only sales pitches for today. Uh, the last thing I want to tell you about is something I'm very proud of. My wife, Denise, says it's the nerdiest thing I've ever done. Of course, I pointed out that she met me when I was 26, so she doesn't know. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> Uh, I am a member of the 501st Legion, right? For the people who don't know, thank you. Uh, for the people that don't know, we're 16,000 members as of the last census around the world. Uh, what we are is a costuming group. We build screen accurate Star Wars costumes, and then we raise money for charity. I think we raised $16 million indirectly uh, last year. Uh, which is kind of cool, uh, but I, mean, I didn't raise $16 million worldwide. Uh, this is me <laughs> in my Vader, right? Uh, that was actually a really cool event. Uh, they brought together 300 blind kids, and they had them watch the movies. Now, I, not, not, not as a joke. I, I, I think it's kind of cool. They refer to it as watching the movie, right? Like, um, and then they had us stand there for a few hours and let the kids feel what the characters felt like, right? Uh, so this is a little boy who is blind, feeling Darth Vader's uh, chest box and everything. Uh, I am crying in this picture. They're like, plain and simple, tears streaming. Uh, and we, we've got other, lots of others, uh, 500 first members uh, in security, uh, Scott being a recent addition. Uh, we're, we're a nerdy group. 
But that's me. The last thing I want to tell you is I am full of tangents. Uh, well, I'm full of lots of things. My eyes are brown. And uh, I have a sense of humor. I do want to warn you, though, that you might have misheard me. I bet you some of you heard I have a good sense of humor. That is not what I said. I said I have a sense of humor. Uh, give you an example. My current favorite joke. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Does anybody know why Walmart wasn't hacked? Why? They're not a target. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So I actually got to introduce the CISO of Walmart at an event, and I told that joke, and he would not shake my hand. <laughs> so, I did this, and the dude went, what? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, you got the good side of the joke. I said you weren't half, right? Then I was at an IONS forum in uh, Minneapolis, and the CSO of Target was the keynote speaker, and I begged. For them to let me introduce her, and they're like, Are you gonna tell your Walmart joke? I'm like, Of course, I'm gonna tell my Walmart joke. And they're like, No, you can't introduce her. I'm like, That sucks, man. Yeah, so that's good. Like, like I said, sense of humor, not good sense of humor. But let's talk about what you're here for, right? How many people here have seen the TV show Parks and Rec? Yeah, right? Man, this show, it was stupid, right? I mean, it really was dumb. <laughs> But I laughed every week, yep. right? I mean, so like, and there were days, like, I, my wife would come in, and she'd be like, Kevin, what is so funny? I'm like, I don't even know. Right? Like, I'm just, I'm just giggling away, right? The show was great. And as I started looking at it and started thinking about it, and, and this is something, and, and I'm going to be ah, mushy, maybe, right? I love you, man. I, what I've realized is... I am not that good. I'm not. I'm not that good at what I do. I'm not that smart. I'm not that capable. I, though, have had a series of giants that I'm allowed to stand on their shoulders. Right? And I hope that it's someday that I can, not a giant, but a kind of tall guy, maybe, right? That can help other people stand up. And this is one of the things that I love about this field, this industry. It's also one of the things I hate about this industry, is that we are really, really good at telling people how they can be better. And in a lot of cases, we're really, really bad because we tell people how they can be better, right? And I think it's important that we as an industry, we as a community, build up each other. Because we suck, right? I mean, it, let's be blunt. It's 2018, almost 2019, which blows my mind. And yet, we're not much better at security than we were 20 years ago. My oldest daughter, she's 16 now, uh, Brenna, when she was nine years old, she was admitted to Wolfson's Children's Hospital for seizure disorder and OCD. My, my daughters both have OCD, uh, as do I, right? And not just like, oh, I like patterns, but neurologically diagnosed, right? Um, about three months after Brenna was in Wolfson's, they were breached. You can literally look up Brenna's social security number on the internet today. Her identity has been stolen multiple. And I don't mean her credit card number. If your identity, like a lot of people say, oh, my identity was stolen. What'd they get? My credit card number. If that's your identity, your life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're probably one of those people that take selfies in the bathroom, because all that does is tell people none of your friends will hold the phone for you. Uh, but, uh, but Brenna, for the rest of her life, at nine years old, I got to have the conversation with her, that for the rest of her life, her data was exposed because of a security problem. Right? Now, it helps when she was 15 and we had to fill out the paperwork for her learner's permit. And my wife and I could not find her social security number, so we Google searched it and typed the number in. <laughs> right? So it is sometimes helpful. But, uh, right? but that's a problem. Now, that, that, that was seven years ago. Right? This morning, this morning, Jason Gillum, one of my people, is doing a test and figured out a way unauthenticatedly. I think I made up that word to steal every customer's piece of information.
from this company with them, from the internet, right? This is a customer that's been pen tested lots and lots and lots by other firms. And I'm not, this is not a little art, we're so much better. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're just not improving. And I think that one of the reasons we're not improving is that we don't approach community correctly. I don't, we don't approach education correctly. We do a lot of victim blaming, right? Uh, we do a lot of, oh, you're stupid, or idiot developers, or, and red teamers, we're the worst, right? Oh man, I won, ha ha ha, right? I mean, this is what we do. And so when I was watching Parks and Rec, and, and you know, I was just sitting on Netflix, oh, this is funny, right? It started to hit me that what they had built, and when I say they, I'm talking about Leslie Hope and, and Ron Swanson, and I also want to be very clear so that people don't leave here thinking I'm psychotic. I may be psychotic, but I know they're fictional. <laughs> <laughs> this was not a documentary, contrary to how they tried to film it, okay? I just, I just okay, I mean, I'd love them to be real, but um, what it hit me was that this little group of dysfunctional weirdos had actually built a team, a community, of people who were helping each other and doing the right thing, right? And the main two characters, people that I don't see it, Leslie Nope, right? And, and Leslie is cool. Uh, she, man, she's not cool, right? But she loves government. She thinks the government is there to save us all. Right? Um, she is absolutely one of those people who's like, yay, socialism or something. I don't know. And I'm not getting political because the only political battle I will fight is VI versus Emacs, and that's because VI wins. Oops. Right? Every time. Well, not every I said that once in a guy in the back of the room in the class, I punched the desk and yelled and stormed out of the room. Uh, when he came back in about an hour later, I found out he was one of the Emacs developers. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to say other than, man, Emacs is a great operating system. But, um, right, Leslie loves government, and she believes in a process, and, and somebody there to take care of you, and show you what to do, and, and tell you what the rules are, right? And she believes that that will work, because everybody is just good. And if we help each other, and oh, it'd be awesome, right? And the government will run everything. And then you have Ron, which is kind of a hypocrite because he's the head of a governmental agency in this town of Pawnee, right? Yet he hates the government. His very, like, he believes not in anarchy, but just in the fact that the government should be tight. Like, the government should be there when you need them, but you get to pick when you need them. And people should be left alone, right? And, and, and do their own thing. And, and it hit me that in our community, we have Leslie's and we have Ron's, right? We have people that fall somewhere in the middle and everything else like that. But the really loud people, the really, oh man, uh, and, and you hear it, right? There are people, we need licensing for security people, right? How many people have heard that? We need licensing for security people. Yeah, and we hear things like, oh, ethical hackers. I would laugh at that title. Who's ethics? Right? Because like some people make the mistake and they'll say that ethical hacking means you follow the law. I disagree with that statement. Right? Because there are things that I consider ethical that are absolutely illegal in some countries, including the US. Right? I believe if you mess with my kids, I should be allowed to beat you within an inch of your life and then kill you. Right? They're my kids. All oh, right. The sheriff probably disagrees with me. Depends <laughs> on the area of the country. Depends on the area. They live in Florida. But, <laughs> right? Th th this is what we see. And we see these groups. And what we find if we ignore the stupid arguments on Twitter. Right? Uh, that would be Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> it would be Twitter. There's some good stuff. Have you not seen We Rate Dogs? <laughs> this is the best. So you've got to see, you're, you're looking at your face, have you not seen We Rate Dogs? It's the oh, best yeah. Twitter account yeah. ever! People send them pictures of their dog and they rate it. And they're wow. all, this is the best dog ever, 13 of 10. It is awesome. Even the ugly dogs get rated well. Like, We Rate Dogs is just the nice Twitter account. But, total tangent. I told you I'm full of tangents and other things. But, we see a lot of the arguments. I just saw one. What's a pen test? 
What's the difference between a pen test and a vulnerability assessment, right? Depends on whether or not security used them. Ooh, good answer. I don't like him. I don't <laughs> buy clubs now. Depends on which one pay more for. Ah, no, it doesn't <laughs> depend. I'm just using it as an example of a stupid argument on Twitter, right? I actually follow Dan Kaminsky and Thomas Patechek just so I can see the two of them fight on Twitter. <laughs> they're both smart people, but without fail, one of them will say something the other one doesn't like, and they're. <laughs> it's the only reason I follow the two of them on Twitter. Right? But what we see. I'm glad this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the arguments we'll see that, like I said, if we remove the stupid ones, are often because the people on the two sides of the argument. Are being stupid, right? Like we see the, and, and I'll be honest, I'll, I'll, I'll be very clear where I fall on this stance, right? You'll see the people like Chris Roberts, who will say, well, it's okay, I hacked that airplane while it was in the air. I know I'm exaggerating. <laughs> and then you'll have people like me like, well, the FBI showed up for a good reason. <laughs> right? And there's that type of argument. And in a case like that, it's, it's a falling on two sides, right? Whether we should regulate, whether we should not regulate, whatever. And it's not a disagreement on what's, what's good. It's not a disagreement about how useful or useless that person is, except when we talk about Kevin Minnick, because he's just a scumbag. But when we look at it, it's very often because we've got people who just disagree on stuff. I, right? And we have to work on the community. And this is kind of funny to me because I am probably the most introverted, shyest person you'll ever meet. Says standing, Says standing in front of a group of people, right? Yes, I, this is an act. Um, I hate traveling. I'm petrified of public speaking. And I don't like meeting new people. Just period. So I became a traveling consultant that presents around the country. But I didn't say I was smart. If you look at our community, like, you know how people will say, and I don't mean this as a joke, right? But you know how people will say, oh, that person's on the spectrum or this. Like, I don't believe we're on the spectrum. Because I think we've broken it. Right? Like we have we have people like me, right? I, I'll be honest, I don't like being touched. Don't touch me. Like, nothing against you, right? Just, I don't like being touched, right? Other people, oh man, you know, this is the way to do this, and this is the way to do this. But we are the weirdest group of people I've ever met. We have people of all types. I was at a conference once, and people were talking about this weird thing that was outside. Um, and I, I'm an avid endorsement. And like they were talking about camping and hiking and all this kind of, and I'm like, why the hell would you do that? You've got a great mattress, right, in your bedroom. And there's other people who do sports. And then there's people who watch sports. That's weird, <laughs> right? Please note I did not say I did sports, right? Um, Because I don't understand that either. But my hobbies are computers. Everybody. But the reality is, we have to build a community. We have to, and I, don't, and, and I look at things like, like ESA, and it's an effort to build community. Because this is an awesome two days. This is, I'm sad to say, this is the first time I've ever made it to B-Side Delaware. I've heard about B-Side Delaware for years. I've heard how great it is up here. And, I, and I'll be honest, part of me was like, yeah, I don't have time, right? I would talk to Josh, and Josh, man, this place is awesome. And I'd be like, you're biased. <laughs> he is, <laughs> right? And I got here, I flew in last night, and I, I came over here, I, I uh, Scott picked my ass up at 6.30 this morning in Baltimore, that was nuts. And we drove, I, I passaged. Um, that's a real word, that's a verb, right, passaged? Um, it is now. It's kind of like gruntled, right? We're all gruntled employees because we haven't become disgruntled. And, and uh, but so we, I passaged up from Baltimore and we drove up here. That was weird, right? Uh, it's kind of, you have tunnels, like holes in the ground. People drive through. 
that's nuts. I grew up in South Florida. That would be flooded, right? That's like, <laughs> like you guys have basements. That would be an indoor pool and not a good one where I live. And, but, and I hung around upstairs. And I had about 4,000 people, I don't count well, <laughs> talk to me. And they didn't talk to me like, oh, hey, you're speaking, right? Because that, like, that's egotistical, like, well, I'm a speaker, you must come to me, right? No, they were talking about cool stuff they were doing, right? I learned things <coughs> standing in the hallway of B-Side Delaware. Right? I learned how great the people up here are and the things you all are working on. I saw kids running around doing cool things. Right? And I, I listened to some talks. I, I, I learned things about e-waste. Dude, that talk was awesome. You all missed it. Not all of you. I saw some of you in there with me. But that was a great, like, it's this thriving, vibrant community that we see. And I hate to tell you, it's not enough. It's not. Because then you can go out to DEF CON, right? And there's 50,000 of your closest friends wearing black in the summer heat of Vegas. <laughs> there's literally a hacker smell that comes out of the yeah. casino. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. 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 But I'm not bashing DEF CON. I like DEF CON. I go, right? I haven't been in a few years, but I love it. But then we leave here tomorrow, because I believe, I'm looking at the Holy Spirit calendar, tomorrow is the last day of Eastside Dollar, right? Okay, right? We leave here tomorrow, and my question for you is, what are you doing Monday, Hurricane? What are you doing online and around the area and everything else? We have to keep building it. We have to join this community. We have to open ourselves up to it. And, oh, by the way, we have to step up. Because I'll tell you right now, we look at, Areas. How many people here go to the OWASP meeting every month when there's one? You know there's not a hand went up. Right? Do you have an OWASP chapter here? Yeah. The answer is yes. I do. Thank you. But I but not a single one of you goes to the OWASP chapter. Right? Now I don't know why you don't. Don't I'm not judging. I am judging you. That's me. But that's important. How many people here have complained about the latest OWASP top 10? Right? I have. I've ranted about it multiple times. Now ask me if I submitted data to the OWASP top 10 project. And the answer is no. I'm a hypocrite. They suck. I didn't help them. Right? How many people here use open source tools every single day? Right? How many people here have ever done a pull request? to a GitHub repo. How many people here have opened up, glad you see it, thank you. How many people here have opened up an issue with a bug they found in an open source project? Right, so I got four hands that time, that's good. Did you give them enough detail they could fix it? <laughs> right, did you submit a code sample they may use to fix it? And I know some of you are sitting here going, but Kevin, I don't know how to code. Okay, but President Obama was able to code. You can too, and I use that as a bad example because I, I hate the, the the hour of code thing that he, he he was one of the examples of. I think it was awesome he was an example of it, but it's this idea that if you just do an hour of code, you'll be an amazing programmer, and that's a lie. Oh, um, <laughs> right? But, I, like, how many of you have submitted code? And then you'll say, but I'm not a developer. And it's like, yeah, okay, how many of you have submitted documentation? How many of you have sat down and done a video explaining how to build something? And I know what you're gonna say. You'd be like, oh, but Kevin, I'm an idiot. This is so simple, everybody knows it. Okay, I'll point one out to you. I run a security company that has 21 of the smartest damn, okay, 20 of the smartest damn people out there, and me. Do you know what one of our most popular blogs is on our blog? How to install beef. It's a doc description of how to install a piece of software. That's one of our most popular blogs. Another one is explaining what cores is. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having to explain what cores is, but a lot of people don't know what it is. 
this is a simple introductory thing. And when Mike came to me and said, I have this idea, what do you think? I'm like, oh, I just draw some ideas. Like, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. I'm like, no, lots of people don't know that. And he wrote it. It was simple documentation. We have to build stuff. Because we've got three major problems that I see. Standards, ethics, and clicks. I feel like we're in high school, right? So with standards, one of the biggest problems I see is we don't have them, right? And I can rant about something close to my heart, right? How many people here do pen testing, right? The only one? Okay, two of us, three of us. Okay, good. Right? Thanks. Okay? Do you know how often I go and do a proposal for a pen test? And my company is not that expensive. Right? We only build 250 an hour. And I know that doesn't sound like an old rate, okay? But in consulting, that's a lower rate. Okay? Um, and we're competing against people who do $500 pen tests. I don't mean to be rude, but if you're paying $500 for a pen test, I'm not going to fight you on that price. I know you can come back to me in three months when you realize how crappy it was, but right, I'm competing against people who run Nessus reports and change the logo and call it a pen test. Those people should be set on fire. But <laughs> right, we talk to people. You know, standards. Right off the bat, standards. How do you know somebody is ready to be a pen tester? <coughs> how do you know somebody's good at forensics? How do you know somebody's good at this job? What are you comparing them against? I'm going to go with certification. Well, that's a great plan. How many people here can afford to go, I'm going to pick a random company, Sands. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but how many people can afford them? What's the price up to? $7,000 with certification. Right? Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I personally, I was a Sands instructor. They are an awesome organization. They are. I'm not bad-mouthing them. But I am pointing out that their price currently is higher than I can afford. That doesn't mean it's bad. That's up to you to decide, right? But how do we know? We compare that to, ooh, the CEH, right? I heard it earlier today. This person said they were a certified ethical hack. Their slide was missing the ER, but that's okay. Um, and they said that just meant we knew a lot of flashcards. And I thought, dude, that sucks. It's a great quote. I think it's accurate, right? But that that's a horrible attitude. Not, not from the person. Like, I'm not making fun of the person. I'm just saying the fact that we have two different standards for certification, one of which is seen as worth $7,000 and effort and everything else of that, and one that's seen as, well, if you can memorize flashcards, you can pass this. And I'm not telling you you're right or wrong on either one of those, but that's a problem for standards. And then we look at what do you do, right? How do you handle it? What's your career path? How many people here believe that they can go take a course at a technical college, and I'm not making fun of technical colleges, and come out and be a senior pen tester. Right? <laughs> Scott does. I had a guy I interviewed, and I was interviewing him for a non-senior position. He had just graduated college. And one of the questions I asked him, what do you need to make? Like, what you, what's your salary requirements? And please note that I'm not trying to have you negotiate against yourself. I hate that idea. But I literally am saying, what do you need? What would you like to make to do this job? And the guy said to me, with a straight face, I would like $300,000 a year. <laughs> wow. So would I. That's what I said. That is a quote of what I said. I'm like, yeah, so would I. And he goes, you don't make $300,000 a year? I'm like, no, I don't make $300,000 a year. And I own the damn company. And his answer was, you don't make enough. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but, right? How far into the interview was this? I just wanted to know if you pulled the plug early on or. Oh, no, I kept going with that interview because it was hilarious. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Man, that was like, I wanted to interview, and my wife told me I wasn't allowed to, and she owns the company as well. And uh, I wanted to interview this guy, uh, uh, submitted a uh, resume for us, and he was absolutely not qualified, but he was a sonar tech. 
when he was in the military. And I wanted to interview him, and we were going to have three people in the room, and one of us would just oh. go, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which one of us? Said, Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> right? I saw. But I, <laughs> we didn't do it. We didn't do it. Right? <laughs> but how do you know? What's the right controls you should have? As a security person, should you be running check marks against your applications? How many people think yes? Good, because their product sucks, in my opinion. But do you have a web app firewall? Are you required to? Right? Should you? Are you even looking at it? Are you even looking at it? Like, I log. Do you review? No. <laughs> That's too much work. Right? We have to build these standards, and we as a community have to build them. We as a community have to get together and say, this is what we do. Because I'll be blunt, if we don't, and including the next one, if we don't, the government will. And I don't care your politics. I don't care if you're a MAGA wearing hat guy or a resist forever, not my president guy, okay? I don't care. The government is not where we want the standards for what we do to come from. We have to do it. Yeah, but the problem is that even, even if we do it, there's still going to be compliance regs that are going to be coming out, right? I have no problem with compliance regs. Stuff that's coming out of California, South Carolina, New York. I have no problem with that. If we built the standards, we could help drive those. Right? I got you in one sentence. You know what I mean? Because I get tired of doing this. So I want to do Because if we built the standards, we can drive that. And the example of that is the movie industry. Back in, I think, the 50s. Yeah, I know. You set me up. I appreciate it. I owe you five bucks. Right? But <laughs> the movie industry, people were bitching and complaining, excuse me, about the inappropriateness of the movies. And the government was about to step in and regulate them and give them ratings and censor them. And the movie industry, whoa, we got this. R, P, G, G, right? And then in the 80s, Gremlins, I don't know why. I saw that movie. I don't know what was wrong with it. But people were like, oh my gosh, Gremlins, that's evil, right? And they're like, don't worry, we got it, PG-13. They drove the regulation. We could do the same thing. Yes, sir. OK, I, I'm going to ask a question. I'm actually not trying to be wise for once in my life. Standards. Everybody wants to be, we are the standard. Oh, yes. We go through a hundred different people yes. who have certs and everything, and the value of this one. But ours is different because we have X, Y. Everybody always wants to be the lead dog. How do we get one that? Okay, here's the ones that Big Tech or some other people believe in that will then make sure that you know we're going to use this one as opposed to this one over here that the great question. manager heard yeah. and thinks we should follow this and that we all know is hard. Absolutely, the right? The, the way we do it is that we start discussing it openly. We at least open ourselves up to be willing to listen. Okay? Because I'll tell you right now, you know what the best standard out there is right now? Keep Ed. Ooh, who said that? Yeah, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know why PTES isn't the best standard out there? Because nobody cares. Because nobody cares. Exactly, right? And I love PTES, other than the fact that, like, tells you, this is the only wireless card you can use. That's a mm -hmm. good, they fix that, right? The best standard out there, PCI DSS. It is. Do you know why it's the best standard? It's the most prescriptive. No, it's not because it's the most prescriptive. That's a nice word. Why is it it's solid? not. It's from a consortium of companies that decided this is the way it's going to be. And we all agree with them and sign contracts to go with it. To the point where the FTC now uses it as the industry standard for what they compare organizations to after a breach. Did you meet this requirement? Right? It's also kind of cool because it's you must be this tall to ride the internet. Right? It doesn't attempt. And let's be clear, right now, I'm like, PCI is awesome. What I'm saying is if we're going to build something, we should build something similar. We can build off of it, right? It doesn't try to answer every single question. It shows you a set of things you should aspire to. And then lets you figure out how to do that. And then lets the industry figure out how to assess it. Now, there are negatives there. Becoming a QSA or an ASV is ridiculously expensive and asinine, right? But that's why I say is it's not the right standard, but it's a good model to base it on. And the way we do this is we work with a group of people who are not in it just to make money. 
Okay. Uh, notice I didn't say not to make money because we're greedy capitalists, right? My business goal is to be protested by the Occupy movement. <laughs> in your cul-de-sac, right? But we need to build this together. And I think to build the standards, we have to focus on the second thing, and that is ethics, right? Because we, what are your ethics? What do you think is okay? Do you believe it's okay that we iterated through all of the data from AT&T and downloaded it? I'm not asking, I'm just throwing that out as an example. Or do you believe that Wesley McGrew's ethics are better when he's talking about going after people for scanning his systems, right? I don't know. I'm asking you that we need to come up with what we think is ethical. Because I'd be honest, I hate the term ethical hacker, right? Because I'll tell you right now, the guy that stole a million dollars from that bank believes he followed his ethics because that million dollars was insured, and this is okay, and blah, blah, whatever, right? Ethics, while we, I won't say ethics are flexible, they are to a certain extent, but what your ethics are may not match mine, right? What I think we need to do is say, what are we allowed to do? And what is the process? And what do we think is a bare minimum of ethics? Like for example, I have customers say to me all the time, can you do a pen test? Like, I don't want you to hack me like the real hackers do. And I always giggle at that, right? Because does that mean I get to sell the data when I'm done as like a bonus, <laughs> right? Like, man, I stole a million credit card numbers from, woohoo, making extra money, right? Like, is that okay? Or, or is it okay for me to tell you who I hacked, right? What, what are the right standards? And I think, I believe, and I'm not that smart, I barely made it out of high school, right? But I believe that we could create, and have a lot of it already, a basic level of what we consider required ethics for what we do, right? I don't know. You, you don't have a history of stealing stuff and selling it on the black market, I, right? I, something simple, right? But we build that level of ethics up. And then we have to realize the third problem we have, and that's clicks, right? We got the goths, we got the nerds, we got the sports. No, I, what you see, and I see a lot of this because over the last few years, Secure Ideas has stopped going to as many security conferences as we used to. And it, it, it's nothing against security conferences, but it's because, I don't know, I'll be blunt, like I told you, I'm a greedy capitalist, right? I'm trying to succeed at paying payroll every two weeks. That to me is a level of success that every two weeks, everybody in the company got their paycheck. Yes, right? To do that, I can't talk to the same 50 people every week, right? And nothing against it, right? But so what we've started to do is to go to security cons, hacker cons, there's a difference, right? And non-security cons. I go to the HIMSS events, I go to the, uh, the RSPA events, whatever, right? And what I see is that there are people who are here, right? Like I, I'm at this one event and I'm talking to people and I mentioned HD Moore. And, and it wasn't like me talking like, ha ha, I know HD Moore, right? Because everybody knows HD, except they don't. I was at a, pro, a professional InfoSec con and I had about 200 people in the room. And when I mentioned HD Moore, Nobody reacted. And I went, like, it hit me. I don't know where it was, but I was like, how many people here know of who H.G. Moore is? Right? And not a single hand in the audience went up. They didn't know who he was. Now, I would like to believe that everybody in this room knows the guy who created Metasploit. Right? The guy who has created a tool set and, and a huge team of people helping him, right? Awesome stuff but did something that moved penetration testing and exploit development light years ahead of where it was, right? And nobody in that room knew who he was. And I realized it's because even inside the nerddom that is InfoSec, and I say that with pride, we have clicks of people who don't cross, right? How many people here go to auditor conferences? Yeah. You learn stuff? Yeah. Of course. 
you say that at DEF CON, man, after this, I'm going to the Auditor Conference. People are like, why would you do that? <laughs> That's stupid. No, it's not. You should figure out what they're looking for so they don't get caught. That's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you had me right up to the end of that. <laughs> I had to learn what they're looking for so I could hide that shit. But I was like, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, you out! <laughs> you bring up the Adobe crack pipe again, aren't you? But <laughs> you gotta learn, you gotta interact with other people, you gotta talk to people, right? And we are seeing better at that. We are seeing people moving in. But the place where I'm seeing it really bad is this last one. Public and users. We still have lots of oh, stupid damn users. You know how much better it would be if we didn't have users? I don't know, man, you wouldn't get a paycheck. Because without the users, we're useless. Our entire job is to support them. We are, as penetration testers, as security people, glorified QA and help desk. We are. I know you don't like that. I don't like it. I want to think of myself as a wizard, right? I'm a genius. I'm not. I'm a glorified QA person. I poke at stuff until it breaks. <laughs> And when it breaks, then I giggle, <laughs> and I go have fun. But that's a different thing. That's the difference between me and QA, right? But we have to engage the users. We have to engage the public. We have to engage developers. How many people here make fun of developers, right? Yeah, you can't help it sometimes. But have you used Ruby? But Just yesterday. I am so sorry. Or are you on crack? But I'm opinionated. Uh, by the way, all of my opinions are my employers. But uh, <laughs> that's my Twitter uh, bio. And, um, right? No, have your attention, please. My have your attention, please. The campus is now closed. If you're still in the building, please make your way to the front exit or call public safety at 393. Again, the campus is now closed. Please make your way to the front exit. There's a small problem with that. Yes, that's I've got that? two more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's news that that applies. Yeah, I'm going to go with the look on her face that she's unaware of. Right, I, and she's things. the boss, right there, right? <laughs> <Be here. laughs> like Josh is the same boat I am. I borrow the pants from my wife when I travel. But um, <laughs> so we have to start engaging people. See, I'm good. Before that, I don't know what to do with that. But. What I want us all to do is I want us to start going out and helping people learn. I want us to start educating. I want us to start sharing better. Because I'll be honest, that's one of the things I loved about this industry when I got started. And I'll tell you right now, this is the only industry I know that you can walk up to the geniuses and giants of what we do and talk to them and they'll talk back. They will answer questions. I know that I'm not special. I'm not. But I know that I can reach out to Mubix. I can reach out to Matt Carpenter. I can reach out to Josh Marpet and Scott Lyons, and I can ask them questions. And these geniuses, well, other than Scott, but these, <laughs> these people, who, my first, let's be honest. they'll take time to answer my questions. And then I say that to people, and every once in a while, somebody will show me an example. Well, I talked to this guy, uh, uh, Chris Roberts, and he wasn't willing to help me. Uh, and I'm not sure. I'm going to use him as an example because he was mentioned earlier, so he's in my head. Right? If the person you reach out to isn't willing to help you, they're not actually good at what they do. That's what I've found time and time again. Every single time I reach out to somebody who is supposedly a genius, who is supposedly an expert, and their answer is, oh, figure it out yourself. Right? They don't actually know what they're talking about. And I, I use the OSCP mantra, and I want to be very clear, I'm not making fun of the OSCP here. I think that certification is awesome, what they do there is cool. But I think that a lot of the idiots in the industry have taken that try harder answer, and they think it's a way to make themselves seem smarter. That's not why it happens with offensive security and the OSCP. But we see people on Twitter, somebody say, hey, you were talking about this, how do you do that? Try harder, man, do it yourself. That's a shitty answer. Go out and help people. Share, talk, communicate, and educate. We can do better.
and we need to be. Because there's way too many things broken today. And it's just getting worse, okay? And I will tell you right now, if you have any questions, if you ever in a situation and I know how to fix it and help you, ask, I will, okay? And if I don't, call me on my own hypocrisy, okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy yourself.